Shalom, like to give out and the glory and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rekak Redash, like your doubleness to our apostles and elders, great millstone, salutations to our Yusuf Aki and pushing his right across the four corners of the world. And the title of this lesson for the vintage should fail part two. And you're going to see a video after this one based in New Orleans, Louisiana, of so called black women throughout this pandemic. The housing crisis is affecting them the most. So despite federal eviction moratoriums, so-called black women are most at risk of losing their housing throughout this so-called pandemic. And you're gonna see different examples of different so-called black women. They're at the end of the federal unemployment payments. Some of their jobs were cut. So of course they wasn't able to make ends meet. So they had to leave. They was getting evicted. So that's biblical prophecy right there of that vintage felon to you so-called women in this Western world, especially you so-called black women, because you go back into the book of Genesis, the third chapter, and Abaratazah, I'm going to read, you were so an illusion, a falsehood, that you was going to be able to conquer the world and just live totally comfortable without any type of regrets, worries, anxiety, but not knowing that who you sold your soul to that cunning serpent, the devil, that you made that covenant with death. So now he's back at you and he's going to snatch up all those things that he gave you, all those different goodies. And that's good for you. So this is the book of Genesis, the third chapter in the first verse. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. So that serpent is not talking about an actual snake. It's parabolic talk, talking about a cunning person, more so a cunning man. And that's the spirit of Esau Eden, who are the so-called Caucasian race today. And that's just how Yahweh Bashim Yahushai spiritually programmed this serpent Esau to be. To be cunning, to be deceitful, to push out falsehoods, lies, to do all types and sorts of wickedness throughout this whole world. So since I said that, you get the book of Psalm, the 52nd chapter, and the second verse. Thy tongue devising mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. So that's how beginning with the elites of Esau Edom are. They sold these women this so-called illusion, hence the women's liberation, this feminist agenda or feminist movement. And that left your natural role as being a woman that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has designed for you to be. And you go to the word woman means a female servant. So you're supposed to be subjected to your husband. You're supposed to take care of the household along with your children. So by that serpent being subtle to you in that garden, he sold you that falsehood. So now, when this women's liberation came about, you start working on the workforce. Then you start acquiring manly traits when you was on these different job sites. You start being more outspoken, more demanding, more masculine, which is totally against your true proper order that Yahweh by Shimao Shai originally designed you to be in. And that's exactly what the serpent does. He does everything contrary to righteousness, which is by the ways of Yahweh by Shimao Shai via the scriptures. So it says, Thou tongue devising mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. So let's go back in Genesis, the third chapter, in the first verse. Now the serpent, which is talking about a cunning man, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had the most I said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden, going to all these different philosophies. And this women's liberation, this feminist agenda, is a tree of falsehood that was sold to you so-called women, especially you so-called black women, because you ate it up. You actually desire into being on top of your man. But not knowing that their agreement that you made with this serpent, he was never to be trusted in the beginning. So he's going to come back and snatch up all the things that you all once made that pack upon. So it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had the Most High said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High has said, Ye should not eat of it, neither should ye touch it, lest ye die. 
Verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So basically this serpent, this cunning, crafty devil, he's telling Eve, the hell with the heavenly father said, if you eat the fruit of this tree in the midst of this garden, and you'll be good. So this is the serpent spinning that game to Eve, telling her things that she want to hear, speaking smooth into her ears. As it says in the book of Psalm 144, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. So your right hand is supposed to be your honor of strength. But Esau's honor of strength represents wickedness, falsehoods, deceitfulness, sorceries, anything that's adverse to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which represents righteousness, because he is that vessel of dishonor. So his tongue is going to be a tongue of dishonor as well. So just like in today's time, you have Esau telling our people, like my different policies, legislations, mandates, my decrees in democracy is much better than the laws, statutes, commandments of your creator, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And two thirds of our people subscribe to the message and to the image of Baal, the image of the beast, which is totally detrimental to your well being. Verse 5, for the Most High do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes should be open, and ye should be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we have to suffer in this hellhole, this prison planet, due to our transgressions. And that's the hope we let of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Abba Ratazah, we get beamed into those glorious chariots and be joint heirs with our big brother Yahweh Shai. Then we will be the perfect judges knowing good and evil because that's a perfect balance of a perfect judge you actually experience wickedness evil then on the other side you experience good righteousness so that's a perfect balance to you how about shim yahweh shah to know both perspectives of the balance and that's how you know we will be able to appreciate righteousness because we have to experience this hellhole in the book of psalm 126 it goes into how this was all a dream this was all a bad nightmare for the israelites here so we will appreciate the kingdom of heaven much more so. And this is the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter and the 33rd verse. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the crew of venom of asp. So going back to that serpent with his enticing, smooth speeches, anything that he pushes out or publicizes out there is totally detrimental. So by this serpent knowing that the woman, Eve in this matter, she's the weaker vessel. So by him speaking those smooth things to her, he knew that would get her rattled up in the spirit and she would be desirous according to the ways of his doctrines and philosophies. And the serpent really did that to get to the man, just like in today's time. Esau sets up all these different government assistant programs, but the number one rule is you can't have no man within the household. And they aim that more towards who? the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and the women of our nation, they subscribe right into that Babylonian wine, which is nothing but poison and cruel venom. So by you accepting his terms and conditions by not having a man within the household, then that just leaves the weaker vessel raising the children within the household. So by not having no type of masculine man actually running the household as it's designed to be, then that house crumbles. It's all chaotic. It's all in disorder. And that's exactly the state that the elites of Esau Eden want the children of Israel to be in. So as long as the Israelites stay in a disorderly conduct, then the longer they can rule on this earth. Remember that he's softer than any beast in the field, meaning that he's very crafty and strategic. He knows how to get to the weaker vessel first in order to get to us because Esau knows that the Israelites man's glory is the woman. So their wine is the poison of dragons and the crew of venom of ass. So anything that Esau pushes out there, especially on a mainstream avenue, so you already know it's something poisonous to your well-being. And it leads me to the book of Isaiah 28 verse 18. And your covenant with death should be disannulled. So that pact, their agreement is nothing but a covenant. So that's what Eve figuratively did when she was in the garden. She figuratively signed on that contract in blood. And she accepted the terms and conditions of that serpent, which represents that poisonous philosophy that he gave to her. 
And that goes into that women's liberation. That a woman should compass a man. That feminist aggressive agenda. So your covenant with death should be disannulled. So those terms and conditions. So just like on a commercial, how they advertising something. And on the fine print, they read it real fast in the commercial. That's pretty much how Esau did to Eve in the garden. He did not tell her how he's just using her to get to the man. Or how he was not going to keep the whole bargain of the deal that they made in that garden. And that that covenant or that pact that they made in the garden was only going to be temporary. So in your covenant with death should be disannulled, meaning it's going to be null and void. And your agreement with hell should not stand. When the overflowing scourge should pass through, then you should be trotting down by it. So that's why it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, against the 12th chapter, I never trust thy enemy. Never meaning at any time, do not trust this serpent. Do not trust his philosophies, his dogma, his mannerisms. Because that leads you into being contrary to your creator. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And this is Isaiah 32 verse 9. Rise up ye women that are at ease. So majority of these women in this westernized world are totally at ease. Don't have a care in the world because they're totally comfortable here. They don't have anything to be troubled about. Everything is given to them on a platter. But not knowing that that deal that Eve made in the garden, that country is going to be disannulled very soon. So rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Another word for careless goes into stupid. Because Esau knows that the woman is the weaker vessel and she's totally driven by her emotions. She makes rash decisions. No type of critical thinking or anything that's dealing with logic or reasoning. She goes by how she feels at that particular moment. It does not have no type of regrets if she does make a mistake behind that decision she made. So pursuant to biblical prophecy, how a woman should compass a man. Look at the current state of this world right now. It's on a total feminine vibration. Except for the hopefully let men of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Look at the so-called men here in this world, especially here in America. They're totally emotional, just like the woman. Pure feminine. And that's just one of the many reasons why Yahweh Shai has to come back and set things aright. Because this earth is out of course right now. So you are careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled. And the times of Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. You read the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the 7th verse. Daniel, the 12th chapter, the 1st verse. That great day is not going to be a day like it. Ye careless women, for the vintage should fail, the gathering should not come. So that's why you're seeing throughout this video... That throughout this so-called pandemic, the housing crisis is hurting the so-called black women the most. And the so-called black woman is more so the spearhead of pushing this feminist movement amongst the other women of our nation. And just really these other nations of women as well here. So it says for the vintage should fail. And that vintage represents how this government assisted programs is designed to help women and women only. When you have the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is called SNAP, which is a government-based food assistance program. You also have the Housing or Urban Development, HUD, where they help women who need government assistance to help pay for their rent, mortgage, to avoid foreclosure, so they can apply for the HUD program. You have the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, the TANF which represents women who need help paying for living expenses can apply for the tenant program. Those that meet the low income requirements for that particular program, they receive cash grants each month that can be used on living expenses, paying bills, transportation, clothing, and more. The government gave them a health care program, which is called Medicaid. They also have different government assistance programs to help them with their monthly bills, different utility bills, telephone services, you already know they have the child care assisted programs. So as you can see that everything is given to this woman on a platter. So by these goodies or these gifts 
that Esau gave her, and you go to the word gift on the Edomite online, it goes into poison. So that serpent Esau, he sport these westernized women, especially the women of our nation, where they have became very comfortable. They feel like they're independent. They're on top of the man. They're stronger than the man. They don't need a man anymore for the household. They can take care of themselves. You have a lot of these American women that receive housing assistance and they can be in a three to a four or five bedroom and paying under $100 a month. So these women at total ease. You have a lot of these American women that created this OnlyFans accounts and where these simps subscribe to them and they be making to six to seven figures a month. So with those goodies, those gifts, it destroyed their hearts. And they became very aggressive, demanding, prideful. And that's something that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh hates. So that's why he's allowing this pride to go on all time high in these last days. That's why it says, tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. So that's why a lot of these prideful American women here are gonna to be totally afflicted. They're gonna really catch the plagues. They're gonna be suffering and catch total pure hell. So they're gonna be troubled in the spirit. So we're coming to those times that these prideful women, especially these so-called independent women, are gonna be wishing that they had a man, more so an Israelite man of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. As it says in the book of Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, beginning at the top, how a man should be as a hiding place for the wind and a covert from the tempest. And that's not talking about just some regular, ordinary man. That's talking about a let chosen man of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It says in the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter, that I will make a man more precious than fine gold. So we're in those times right now, how it's in the woman's favor to choose who she wants to be with. But in that day of time, which is right around the corner, it's going to be turned all the way around. How it's going to be a let man of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai to choose who he wants. Yeah, Abarathas out there's us as the hopefully let men. And we're going to be very choosy and selective in that day of time. So it's about to be a total major righteous shift on this earth. And this is the book of Micah, the second chapter. In the 10th verse, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So speaking to the Israelites that are really trying to seek Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, spiritually depart from this place, spiritually depart from the fashion of this world. Because at the end of the day, it's totally detrimental to our well-being. So arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. And just really for all the Israelites, this is not our rest. As it says in the book of Baruch, we are yet this day in our captivity. So if you're in captivity, you're not supposed to be comfortable. You're not supposed to be in the spirit of things getting better here so we can go back to so-called normalcy. You're not supposed to be prolonging this place to continue. In a righteous mindset, you're supposed to be hoping and quietly waiting for the salvation of your power. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. To deliver you and set you up upon your own enemies. And it says, because it is polluted, it should destroy you even with a sore destruction. So it's going to destroy two thirds of our people that are caught up into this system, this way of life. As it says in 1 John, the second chapter, the 15 verse, if any man love this world, then the love of the Father is not in him. And in this case, pertaining to the title of this video, and the women as well, they're trusting to Egypt, their oppression. And last but not least, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse. Make notarian to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly should the wrath of the Lord come forth, hence Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, much hell, anarchy, and chaos in the streets of America. And in thy security, thou shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So going back to your security, something that you are free from risk, danger. You have 100% comfortability here because of those gifts that Esau has totally ruined you with. But we're coming to those times that these men that are now part of the elect of Yahweh by Shem El Shai, they're going to be animalistic out here because it's going to be a survival of the fittest spirit out here. So what you think that these men are going to be doing to these women out here? Right now, they have the benefits of 911, child support. Anything dealing with the court systems is in their favor. 
But wait till all hell breaks loose. We really gonna see that type of vibration that be out here, especially upon these men that are not governed by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So meaning they're gonna be in an animalistic spirit. And it's gonna get very rough on these prideful American women. So going back to the title of this lesson for the Vintage Shafel Part 2. And Abba Razak, you all be edified by this. You all stay strong. Shalom.